look at this frame by frame animation. Pretty cool, right? This video will tell you how I made it and how you can start animating today. Well, hello there, I'm Detroit. Short black and white animations are really trendy right now. I think it's mainly thanks to Teleporte, who is incredibly talented and pretty fast as well, considering they upload a new animation every day. Anyway, these frame by frame animations are cool and I want to jump in on the cool train. You saw the animation I made at the beginning. Here's what you need to know to animate in this style. But first, consider subscribing to this channel. At least think about it, okay? I might as well use this moment to also mention the other video I did on how to animate in Photoshop, where I explain a bit more how to set up the animation panel in the software and the different tools you might want to use to get started. You can find it in the card at the top right corner of the screen. Here are the core concepts of animation we'll be talking about today. Keyframes, which are the important frames, quote unquote. In betweens, which are the other frames to go from one keyframe to the next in a smooth motion. And lastly, you have to know about onion peels. There are a lot of other important animation words and lingo that might be useful, but I don't think they are necessary to start, so we'll skip right over them. So keyframes are what you should first consider. These are the frames that will define your movement in your animation. What I'm considering here are this picture and this picture. Because I want the point of view to rotate around the character, I'll draw these two images first. The first I did off camera because that was my sketching process for determining what I wanted my animation to be. So I have a character to the side and then straight on. These are my two keyframes. Now it's time for the in-between. Now usually these tweens will show up on screen for less longer than the keyframes, but we'll work on that a bit later. The main reason I think it's important to work with the keyframes first before doing the movement frames is because you can use onion peel features. In Photoshop, you activate them from the menu on the right of your animation panel. What they do is show you the frames before and after with a lower opacity. This allows you to see what you're working towards and where you're coming from. So since we have our two keyframes showing, it's much easier to draw a frame that will be in the middle of the two, the in-between. So now we have three frames to work with. I can draw new in-betweens to make the movement as smooth as needed and it's now much simpler than if I did it linearly starting from the first frame. Once you understand that concept of using keyframes, onion peels and in-between frames, you can basically animate anything. The main tip I can give you would be to always start your animation process with this idea in your mind. Draw as many keyframes as you need but only start the in-betweens after. And here, as you're watching me draw, I know it's a case of do what I say and not what I do. Look, I'm not a professional, y'all. I tend to go all over the place and I know my workflow isn't the most efficient. But yet another reason to do it this way is that at any time you can view the whole animation and decide if it's worth adding in more in-betweens or not. There is no use animating a thousand frames per second. The human eye can only follow so many images next to each other. Within reason, the less in-betweens you have, the more the movement will feel fast. The more in-between frames you draw, the smoother the animation will be. So it's a balance between these two, smoothness and speed. You have to feel the right rhythm for your animation. And for that, I'm afraid I can't really give you any tips. It's just feeling. Contrarily to what I said earlier, right now I'm drawing linearly. There is a reason for that. As you can see, with each new frame, I'm opening the jaw more and adding more teeth. I know my animation will end with the point of view being from inside the mouth, so it's not really a good keyframe to have. As we zoom in on the mouth and more teeth appear, I find it easier to add complexity with each new frame rather than have to find the right middle between a simple frame at the beginning and a very complex frame at the end with all the teeth, a skewed angle on the face and a character that is already zoomed in. So instead, I am drawing each frame after one another. Notice that I still have quite a bit of leeway in the sense that the change between successive drawings is still quite important. That way, if I need to smooth out the movement, I can still draw in-betweens. As it turned out, I didn't need to because I wanted the ghost transformation to happen fast, so less frames felt better. I did add a few other frames here and there off camera, and the process is not always straightforward. 
I am not finished yet, but I'll already tell you what I do at the end to make it look better. Considering the rhythm I want the animation to have, I'm playing it on repeat and finding the spots where I want the frames to slow down. The way Photoshop is set up here, there are 30 frames per second, which is way too fast. By picking each frame and extending them to what feels right to me in relation to each other, I can then extend the length of the animation from less than a second to a bit more than 2 seconds. In a basis of 30 frames per second, some drawings will last for 4 frames, some others for 2 or 3. For a more dynamic animation, I will make the frame of the girl facing us and smiling normally a bit longer. This way the viewer will be even more impacted when the scary smiles appears and gets bigger. The change will be even more brutal, while still being somewhat smooth. Overall, this animation gets faster and faster as it gets crazier. I had that sort of animation in mind already when I started this project. Again, talking about Teleporte, their animations are crazy good and also very popular. By making this animation, I hope to get a bit more views and traction on YouTube because at a glance the thumbnail of the girl's face will look a bit similar. Only, I always want a twist, and that's the three rows of teeth, which I don't think Teleporte has drawn on a cute girl before. You see, there are two things stopping me from making animations like Teleporte. Well, make it three, considering the difference in talent. First off, I don't want to straight up copy someone else. Being inspired by and ripping content from are completely different things. The second thing that is different is the sexiness of the animations. I love how crazy good looking the animations are, and I'm well aware that the constant thirst is also a reason for Teleporter's success. But I don't want to do that. I want my channel to not be too sexually oriented. I feel like using sexually evocative images, either in the thumbnail or in the video, is sort of a vicious circle that you can't really get out of in YouTube. Once people follow you for that, that's the only thing they'll expect from you. I also don't want to spread a constant wave of thirst on the internet like everybody seems to be doing. Note that it doesn't mean my content is okay for children. I reserve myself the right to draw very sexy stuff if I want to, but I don't really feel like doing adult content. My channel is not for kids, just because I want to be able to say fuck and shit and at least three languages worth of swear words if I feel like it. On the other hand, I don't want my characters to be sexualized in any way, especially if I don't intend them to be. I went on a deep tangent here, but would you look at that, it seems I'm done with the drawing process. Let's export it to MP4 and take another look at the finished animation. See if you can grasp what I meant earlier with the feeling of the rhythm on the character's transformation and movement. Like the video if you found it interesting and tell me your thoughts on this animation process in the comments. You can also leave suggestions on what I should draw in the future, that would be fun. Don't forget to subscribe for more content twice a week, here and on my Instagram as well. Do also follow me on Twitter and come slide into my DMs if you want. I'm still called Detroit and I hope you had fun. Bye!